Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to another installment of the Modern Playbook. I'm Gary Nusser, the comic despective, and I'll be looking tonight at some Star Wars books. Um, I brought the gear, and I figured, you know, if if a guy like Mike Morello can, you know, talk about Star Wars, I mean, what are that guy's qualifications anyway? Do, 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 do we know if he really is a died in the wool Star Wars fan? I mean, I saw the original trilogy um, like twice easily. Um, I have the holiday special on VHS and um, you know I have a whole bunch of books here to show you so I mean to me that makes me a star you know Star Wars qualified expert um, but in all seriousness of course Mike Morello is a huge Star Wars guy uh, he has an extensive collection he's a savant when it comes to uh, George Lucas's creation uh, and I figured everybody has said everything there is about all of these new characters that have come out. And not just like the main ones like Doc Afra and um, and obviously some of the Kylo Ren's things and things that we've seen with some of the uh, now the Jedi's and the and the Darth um, you know, Sidious, uh, beyond Darth Vader. I mean that's really the only Darth Maul, that's the other one I know. Uh, but I do have a very cursory knowledge of Star Wars. Um, I did used to read the uh, the old Marvel series. I was very happy when Marvel got the license back again from Dark Horse. Uh, and I guess my biggest Star Wars claim to fame in comic collecting is, um, I'll show you in a little bit, I, uh, one of the covers. Uh, there was the 40th anniversary, um, I guess was that 40th anniversary? 35th maybe? Uh, when we get to it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what I collected, or I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. But what I'm going to show you tonight are uh, some Star Wars variants that I think, for one reason or another, uh, could be undervalued. And um, also, just to show you some of the major variants that I like on some of the, uh, the main characters, especially from the original trilogy, but I'm going to show some, um, some other books as well. Uh, start out when Star Wars came back to... Marvel, um, I had to get that Alex Ross classic Star Wars, um, Star Wars cover. Uh, again, this is a book that probably back at the time went for maybe $20, $25 and probably still goes maybe for that. Uh, the other issue, one that I bought, because there were so many variants, if you remember when they came out, was I loved, um, I love any kind of X-Men homage and this Star Wars one is, um, for me... You know, to have my favorite characters um, from the trilogy uh, representing, uh, again, one of my favorite books of all time, X-Men. You get those two together. To me, that's like uh, Reese's Peanut Butter, right? Chocolate, peanut butter. Uh, signed by Mike Perkins. I think I probably got this from Midtown back in the day. Uh, I guess I have to talk a little bit about the second trilogy. And the only really cover I could find that I have any interest in... Um, was uh, this one with Anakin and Padme. This is actually from the Star Wars um, Adventures. This was issue 12, uh, retailer incentive variant. I like the sort of Disneyfication of this, the style as well. Um, I think these are the kind of books that sometimes can um, heat up. If you ever see sort of uh, maybe an animated series, something pop up. Um, I know they've done some animated series for Star Wars, maybe, I haven't seen them. Uh, Rebels. Uh, Another book that we saw come up today, and there was casting news, and I started thinking about, uh, you know, how much do we actually know about these, um, the Cassian and K2SO um, characters from Rogue One? And of course, the first issue you would want was the um, Ro Star Wars Rogue One one. That was the first introduction of those characters. I actually really enjoyed that movie, Rogue One. Um, it was sort of one of those where let's pull the heist off, but you know no one's going to make it. Spoiler alert for maybe someone who didn't see it, but probably not. But I also like the uh, sort of the design concept Star Wars Rogue One 2 variant. Um, the one for issue one that you want, of course, is the uh, the Dotson version that's starting to pick up heat. I've, I saw it come up from, um, I posted about it on my Twitter feed, then I saw it pop up from a couple other people who I know are very on top of things. Uh, the other book that I think is of interest, there was um, there was a special, uh, a Rogue One, uh, Cassian and K2SO special. There was a variant cover for it as well. But I think the one that's of most interest is probably the OzCon variant. Um, I do tend to collect these first issue convention variants on a lot of these books. Uh, what's interesting about this one is it gives you the origin of uh, how these two characters met. 
sort of, um, they were on opposite sides, of course, uh, for anyone who saw the movie. Uh, but we know that somehow they ended up together, and this explains what happens. Uh, there were twins in here as well, but um, I know that there was a, a casting announcement today. Um, I think, uh, like, maybe a female in her 20s, so I'm not sure what role she could play. But, but this was the origin, and uh, uh, the Rogue One comics went pretty much according to the storyline. Uh, the only other thing I really have out of that, and again, just because it's a con, uh, con variant, uh, the, um, the Emerald City Comic-Con version, uh, issue one of this as well. I do, uh, I know there's a Michael Walsh 1-25 to I have buried away with the ships on it. I do like to collect some of the ship covers as well. But, um, but now let's get into some of the characters that really, for me, make Star Wars tick. Again, these aren't going to be super rare variants. Um, I spoke a lot before it came out and um and again please do follow me on twitter if you don't at uh at the anglo underscore files on um on twitter and that's where i post up a lot of my spec that you'll see um that i'll, I'll go into more depth here but uh i did talk about that bounty hunters uh the johnson cover and uh just seeing boba fett and then seeing the three sort of reflections including the the first appearance uh i've also spoken a lot in the past um about some of the characters that I think could eventually heat up down the line um, from that Bounty Hunters book. Uh, but again, that's a book that you had to be in on early to make any money off of it. Uh, just like those beautiful Joe Quesada covers, right? The ones he did for uh, Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. Uh, beautiful Ray covers actually designed for his daughter's um, room. Uh, and then they eventually became variant, uh, beautiful variant covers and uh, very difficult to find. Uh, but that's not what this is really about. This is more about books that you can still find uh, online if you do a little digging around, um, if you feel comfortable going to your local comic shops and wearing a mask, also digging in some of the boxes and, and finding some of the books that, uh, that sort of hide out amongst uh, as people are chasing, chasing all the first characters. Uh, Han Solo, obviously one of my favorites. Um, I have uh, tons of Indiana Jones stuff. Uh, anyone growing up at that time, um, I was born in 73, so you know that um, that trilogy was sort of right in my wheelhouse of uh, that and, and Back to the Future trilogy, and um, of course Indiana Jones, which I saw all those movies like literally a dozen times. Uh, so maybe Star Wars would come in three on that list for me, but uh, but nonetheless, loved, uh, loved Han Solo, always big uh, big Harrison Ford fan, one of my favorites of all time. This was the... Um, the Europe Star Wars Celebration variant from 2016. Again, they do these, uh, a lot of these con variants for issue ones of these books. I may have a few more in there. I had to get, of course, because who doesn't love the Han Solo Carbonite Chamber? Um, I have a lot of the action figure variants, as I'm sure everyone does, but um, I only really grabbed the ones that I have a meaning for me in terms of uh, moments in the movie, and that was a, a key moment, of course, in Empire. We also have a um, uh, Kamikoli who does a lot of the uh, artwork, uh, interior artwork on Star Wars as well, I think, and uh, this was the Star Wars uh, 4. Uh, always love these sort of scenes of Chewie and Han Solo. 1 to 25, I think, as well. Um, I tend to buy these up when I find them, um, like like $5 or so in, in boxes, uh, because you can you can flip these for, for $20, and if, if a cover heats up or if there ends up being a, a retroactive first appearance in there, also for that Star Wars 4, the, uh, the book Simillion, it has uh, Han, Chewie, and of course Boba Fett on there. Again, cheap, cheap buys, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Uh, here's a book that I bought um, from Midtown back when it came out. And uh, this was the, uh, the Dotson for 38. Beautiful cover, right? Uh, the great late uh, Carrie Fisher. Uh, Mark Hamill's Luke Skywalker on the cover as well. And the Dotsons, who for me... Uh, one of the all-time greats on uh, Princess Leia. In fact, probably probably one of my favorite covers. Um, and, and, of course, he's done a few covers of her. But one that just came out when they rebooted Star Wars again at Marvel. This is a second reboot. Uh, that Jen Bartel cover. And I'll, I'll take it out of the... Um, it's in one of those, I guess, really shiny, shiny bits. But I sort of love that. You know, Jen Bartel, beautiful work uh, for those, again, who... Follow me on Twitter. You know that I commissioned a um, a Sabrina, um, the uh, cursed Sabrina, whatever that's called, uh, and with the Kieran uh, Shifka version, and uh, sent me a really beautiful piece along with a little like uh, thank you card because it took forever to get here. 
Uh, but always a big Jen Bartel fan, um, and I continue to think her work is sort of collectible. And I don't have to tell you if uh, if you're watching this, you know you know Jen Bartel what she brings. Uh, so this is what I spoke about earlier. Uh, this was the 40th anniversary of Star Wars. Uh, there were 48 of these to chase all together. Um, my goal was to chase and put together sort of a near mint 9.8 set. I think I ended up getting 45 of the 48. There's also a weird thing where like 27 was printed twice, so there is no 28, I think, or 28 printed twice, so there was no 29. But this is uh, one of my all-time favorite artists, Stuart Eminem. This was a cover that really heated up from that run of books. Uh, there are a few that are tough to find, and, and interesting, actually, because I was so busy collecting you know, the bottom, the numbers. Um, you know, there's some Darth Maul early issues in there, uh, some early Doc Aphra stuff as well. So some of these books may pick up eventual value, but um, I think I have about maybe 30 doubles sitting around the line. So if you're ever looking, shoot me a line and, uh, and I'll, I'll hook you up with some of the, uh, some of the extras from there. Uh, Darth Vader, always grabbing his stuff. Uh, Lionel Francis Hugh, this is Star Wars 3. I think this was a 1 to 25, um, maybe. Uh, this was uh, issue one. This was sort of the movie concept art. I love, you know, always love with that red, red light coming out here again. Nothing crazy, maybe like $8 to $10 books. Um, some of them I know have heated up a little bit. And, you know, so now and then they may go for $25. Uh, here's one that's a little hotter. Uh, this is the Mike Del Mundo. Mike Del Mundo, I collect all of his covers, all of his art. Uh, Darth Vader, issue two, a uh, great variant of just the Stormtroopers lined up. Very evocative of like those sort of propaganda posters, right? Uh, and I think there's some sort of like early cameo maybe of that um, that Jedi that showed up. I sold that variant. That 1 to 25 was blowing up, right? Um, and I think that he died maybe, the Jedi that Darth Vader fought, maybe. Uh, I think this may be a Matina uh, issue four variant again. Just, just you know, there are so many great Darth Vader covers. I just sort of always love him rising up uh, solo, solo covers uh, on the background. Uh, Boba Fett, he's been covered everywhere. I'm not going to show you any covers you haven't seen. I still do think like I find these all the time for like three, three to five dollars. The Star Wars Boba Fett, Tim Bradstreet, who I love back from his Vertigo cover run. Uh, I think these at that price are undervalued, especially if you find nice copies of it. And you should always, of course, make sure it has that wizard certificate of authenticity because, you know, the wizard seal is golden. Uh, I also did collect a lot of the Galactic Icons. I didn't go for all 36. I only collected the ones I really liked. So uh, that Boba Fett one, I think this one, if you got in, uh, got a few of these at cover value, these are selling um, nicely. These will heat up again when we see the return of the Mandalorian. Uh, and I also did get... Uh, I was one of maybe one of the, you know, the minority who liked uh, the Solo movie. I liked Han Solo. I thought they did a good job. I would have been more interested to see what uh, Lord and Miller did before uh, Ron Howard took over, but I thought it was pretty serviceable. Uh, and I thought maybe uh, some of these uh, Kira Galactic Icon covers um, may heat up down the line if we see more out of her. We've heard of possible books coming um uh, especially with this High Republic, right, is coming down the line. Um, I'm not sure what era. I guess that's the era after. Um, I, I guess I have to start reading this. And I know Charles Soule is involved in some, um, I think maybe he's writing the novels, but then there'll be an IDW uh, thing of, of lower ages stuff, and then there'll be the, uh, the Marvel uh, higher age stuff. And um, speaking of IDW, uh, this was the uh, Forces of Destiny Ray uh, variant covers. Um, I love these. Uh, I think these, you know, I bought like maybe five of these. I've been able to uh, flip these for a nice amount, keep the two nicest copies, get one slab, hold on to one when the, these books heat up again. But but nice sort of um, variant cover for uh, issue one that was of Star Wars Forces, uh, Force of Destiny Ray. Uh, we've also heard about Ewan McGregor being involved in the um, the Obi-Wan series. Uh, two covers that I thought really picked up his sort of visage without being sort of photorealistic covers uh, of the Star Wars issue 7. I think one's a 1 to 25 and maybe one's a 1 to 10. Uh, but again, you can sort of see the likeness and the images on this. Uh, this is... Um, I always love how uh, Mel V pronounces... Uh, Simone Bianchi, um, Simone Bianchi, and um, this might be, um, I know I'm going to be wrong on this, I thought maybe it was uh, a Marco Cicchetto, but it's probably not, but again, 1 to 10, 1 to 25, 
Obi on the cover, um, issue seven, Star Wars. Again, a few other of the um, issue one variants from other cons. This is from Vienna Comic Con. There was a color and a sketch on this. I just like this Vader down one because it did have, of course, the, um, the classic Star Wars poster. Um, but it also had uh, Doc Afra on the cover as well, which um, we know Afra books are heating up. Uh, again, these are cheaper books that you can still grab, still find at, um, at and you won't break the bank. Uh, so this was a Doc Afra Sarah Pacelli uh, issue one. So this was three covers, um, probably a store variant, um, obviously a store variant. So color, uh, sketch, um, still pretty cheap. Uh, but the one that you always chase when you buy a lot, of course, is that Virgin variant as well. Um, it's just sort of her looking out in the distance. And I always love Sarah Pacelli. And again, these books aren't crazy to look for. Uh, also from that run, um, looking for variants, uh, issue eight, the Denver Comic Con. And again, just her solo on the cover, but actually look in her goggles. And um, it looks to be, you know, some sort of Darth something. Uh, Issue three of Darth Vader was, of course, uh, I don't have to tell you, Doc Afra's first appearance. And um, I do have uh, the regular uh, first print of that. I do not have the um, the one that everyone's chasing that has blown up insanely. But I did pick up a couple of these uh, and on the cheap and pretty recently. And now I, uh, these books have started to heat up a little with the second and third and fourth print variant run. They're all different colors. Uh, I love the green, how it sort of pops off there. This is a third print variant. Uh, I had a sort of great feeling about this. I'll, I'll be doing a special show soon about sending books in to be slabbed where I'll have 64 books in sort of a tournament and um, you can bet that one of those will be on there. Uh, we also heard some news unconfirmed about that Lando series and I know a lot of people uh, besides his first appearance uh, canonically in the first Marvel series uh, and the second um, iteration of Marvel uh, this was of course classic Billy D uh, and I wanted you know this looks a lot like um, like an Alex Maleev cover um, and I guess it is right. Uh, and it's still really cheap. It's like four dollars. So I, you know, I wasn't. I'm not sure how many of the Lando books came out at the time, but I'm more interested in when they did the Lando Double or Nothing, which um, really caught the uh, the Donald Glover appearance, or um, as some people say, the Childish Gambino um, variant covers. Uh, I know there are uh, a couple photo covers of um, of Donald Glover on this, but I really. Uh, I'm a huge fan of David Nakayama, a lot of his work uh, that he, he's done. Um, I think he's an undervalued uh, guy, and I'd be picking up a lot of his things, especially some of his uh, female-centric covers. Um, he's doing a lot of store variants later, uh, lately, but um, especially that uh, the maybe uh, Apocalypse and the Externals um, variant that had um, a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful cover, a rainbow cover. But anyway, uh, Nakayama... Uh, that's one that I would go after. That was for issue one. I believe it was a one, uh, one through 25. And then, um, this one at the end, I think was also a one to 25. Brian, the great Brian Steel Freeze. Uh, this might be my favorite of that whole run. And I know those, set, um, I know those variants are starting to heat up a little in between, but these would be the two, probably issue one. And that issue five is just a beauty. Uh, and I think they're both one to 25 and I, I'm a huge Brian Steel Freeze fan. Uh, last book tonight, because I'm running almost on 20 minutes uh, over my allotted time, perhaps. Uh, my all-time favorite Star Wars cover, and again, be no surprise that it's an homage of a, of a great X-Men cover. Um, of, of course, Uncanny X-Men 145 with, uh, with Storm uh, and Dracula on the cover. Uh, and again, it only came out as a 9.4. I'm still convinced because it's sort of a vintage looking cover, but this will remain slabbed and in my collection and I'd never sell it anyway. Uh, but this is that awesome, right, that Mark Brooks cover. I'm not getting that reflection on there, sorry. Maybe if I turn this light off for this last one, let's see. Yeah, it's not much better. Uh, but gorgeous um, Brooks cover. Maybe it's a little misaligned. Maybe that's why I got the 9.4. I even love the corner box of you know the different different troopers. Only nine point four, but a beauty of a cover. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that before as well. But I just wanted to uh, talk some Star Wars variants with you tonight, um, or this morning, or whenever you happen to be watching this. And thank you for joining uh, me, Gary Nusser, the Comic Perspective, on another installment of the Modern Playbook.